Hey there, Earl here. So this is a follow-up video on the screen copy video that I did months ago, which I'll link here and on the description box. Um, screen copy is a software so you can stream your Android device screen to a Mac or PC. I'll be answering questions, most frequently asked questions from that video, and that includes how to run screen copy wirelessly, how to include audio with screen copy. Then we'll also cover things such as how to show the touches, like a circular blip where you touch the screen how to make it full screen, how to rotate the screen, how to configure the stream such that the latency and delay is reduced. That's by setting the resolution and bitrate lower. So things like that and more, so stay tuned. All right, so first things first, I should have mentioned in the previous video that screen copy only does video. But there is sound copy, which is screen copy, but for sound. You can run it on its own or alongside screen copy. However, sound copy only works for devices with at least Android 10. And also, VLC Media Player must be installed on the computer. I'll paste all the terminal commands we'll use in this video in the description so you can just copy-paste it instead of type it. So go to the sound copy site, I've put the link on the description. Scroll down and then download the corresponding the appropriate zip file for your computer. So if you're using um, Mac OS or Linux, download this. But then if you're using Windows, download this one. So I'm using Mac OS, so I'm going to download this one but I'll also include instructions on how to do this on Windows. So now we have the file here, sound copy. I've already extracted it. And then this is the content of the sound copy folder. Before we run this, we have to enable ADB or USB debugging on your device, your Android device. To do that, tap the build number on your phone settings multiple times until developer options menu comes up. Enter the menu, look for USB debugging or ADB or something similar, then enable it. Now, so let's get our device and plug it on the computer. So let's plug our device in. And as you can see, it prompts um, to allow or deny access to phone data. Press allow. Now on your computer, go to terminal. I'm using iTerm, so I'm gonna launch that here on Mac OS. If you're using Windows, CMD works. Then point your terminal to the sound copy folder that you just downloaded and extracted. So mine is in downloads and sound copy v1 yeah that's it so now i'm inside the sound copy folder which contains these files and once you're here the only thing you need to do is run sound copy so for mac os and linux that's dot forward slash sound copy now the streaming app on the phone will prompt if you want to start recording or casting with sound copy press start now and then press enter on the terminal if you get an error saying VLC command not found or the system cannot find the path specified for Windows or something similar, make sure you have installed VLC Media Player on your computer. If it is already installed and you still get this error, you may, you may need to add VLC to the environment path. To do that, just copy and paste this line on your terminal. So let's run sound copy again. It's going to prompt on your phone again. Okay, press start now, then press enter on the terminal. And now it's connected. All right, so let's play my previous video on the MK M three seven five S keyboard. As you can hear, both devices are playing. This phone and the laptop is playing. Now the laptop is playing through the Unsangle speaker that I have right here. So that's it. It's it's now working. I've also tried other applications such as games like Call of Duty and it works. You might see errors like connection error, etc. This, this wrong errors will probably get fixed soon. If you're using Windows and you get this VLC command that found error, navigate to the folder that you extracted, right click the sound copy.bat file, press edit or open with notepad or something similar. The third line should say if not defined VLC set VLC equals this line. Now, what this line is doing is defining a path for the VLC so that the command will know where to find the VLC executable. Now, check if your VLC is installed in the program files folder or in the program files x86 folder in your C drive or whatever location you installed VLC. Then edit the third line accordingly to that path. It's worth noting that sound copy is not a production level software just yet. It's still a proof of concept or a work in progress, but don't worry that doesn't mean it will destroy your devices or it's unsafe or whatnot. It only means it's not proven and tested to work on many devices or applications yet. 
So just give it a try and if it works, then great. All right, now for wireless running of screen copy. First, you'd have to follow the previous video, the original video and make it work wired. That's a prerequisite. Link to the first video is on the screen corner card and on the description box. Then once you got it working wired while your phone is still connected to your computer, follow these instructions. First is to connect your phone and computer to the same Wi-Fi network. After that, get your phone's IP address. The easiest way to do this is to go to your phone's Wi-Fi settings, select the Wi-Fi network that you're connected to, then you'll see the IP address assigned to your phone. Now take note of that IP address. Now on the terminal, enable ADB over TCP IP by typing ADB TCP IP 5555. And now it's going to restart ADB in TC mode port 555. It's going to show that allow access to phone data prompt again on your phone. Just press allow every time it shows up. So now we have enabled ADB over TCP IP. So now we can unplug our phone. Let's go ahead and unplug it. So now I've unplugged my phone and now we can try to connect to it wirelessly. So to do that, do ADB connect, put in the device IP that you've seen earlier. So that's for me, that's 168101. Oh, missed something here. 010155. And then put in the port. And now ADB is not connected to your phone wirelessly via the IP address that we provided. So now the last step and the next step is to run it. Screen copy. We can run it that way, but just to make sure you can put in the identification for your device. So that would be the IP address. So that's 192.168.0.101 and then the port. Press enter and boom, there you go. Wireless screen streaming. And yes, you can control the phone on your laptop even wirelessly. So right now I'm controlling the phone from my phone, but I can also control the phone from your laptop. I'm just on a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network here. And right now there are three devices connected on the network and it's still pretty performant. Just not as smooth as wired, of course, but we can configure the stream to have less bit rate and less resolution so that we can improve the latency and reduce the delay. So if you want it to run smoother, you would want to consider reducing the resolution and bit rate by adding these parameters when running screen copy. We're now diving into the configuration stuff. So let's cancel the stream, control C, so let's try this configuration. Bitrate is set to 2 Mbps and maximum size is 800 pixels. Now by default, bitrate is set to 8 Mbps and the resolution would depend on your phone. Let's say for example, this phone has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Setting the max size as 800 would force the long side of the screen to be 800. So for example, the long side of this would be 1920, then it would be force 800 and then the short side will be automatically calculated in such a way that the aspect ratio is maintained. As you can see, the screen became smaller and it's more performant than previously, the default setting, which is high bit rate and high resolution. And by the way, if you rotate your phone, assuming orientation isn't set to lock, then the screen copy window will follow the phone orientation. But you can also force rotate screen copy by typing screen copy dash dash rotation one. This way, no matter the phone orientation, screen copy will stick to this rotation mode. You can also directly run screen copy at full screen. Just type screen copy dash dash full screen. But you can also just run it normally and just press full screen on the window on your computer. So to turn it off on run, you can try screen copy dash dash turn, screen off, so as you can see, the device screen is off. And to prevent screen locking on your phone while you're streaming, you can do dash dash stay awake. So now the phone screen won't sleep. This parameter show touches run screen copy in such a way that it will show your screen touches. As you can see here, my screen interactions are represented by this circular blip on screen. And it also shows multi-touch gestures. It's pretty neat. So check their site for more configurations. It's generally the same pattern. You provide the customization parameters when running screen copy. And guess what? You can also run sound copy wirelessly. So you can run sound copy and screen copy simultaneously wirelessly. So while screen copy is running, go ahead and run sound copy. Run sound copy. Now ask me this. 
press enter on the terminal and now it's streaming both audio and video so let's try youtube so keys by default that means pressing that f7, means for, pressing example, f7 example, for example or pause. Play or pause. But as you can see, I'm playing a YouTube video on my phone and both the screen and audio is streamed to my MacBook wirelessly. Awesome. And there you have it. If you faced any errors or run into any problems, just comment down below and I'll try to help probably by Googling those errors as well. But yeah, I'll try. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.